social distancing, not. They got it wrong. It's physical distancing, not social distancing. This is episode 16 on What Has My Attention, the podcast about, well, what has my attention in podcasting and life. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm John Beathan, your host. This is being recorded on March 12, 2021, and I know things look very much like if we mind our P's and Q's, we'll be back to some real unmasked socialization very soon. Probably the most valuable thing I've learned over the last many years of podcasting is that over time, podcasting builds long-lasting, trusted relationships, which are absolutely worth their weight in gold, personally and in business. And during the pandemic, there have been a lot of new podcasters who are on the path to discovering just that. But here's what's got my attention lately, and with a very big concerning question. What are the physiological and psychological effects and impact of the isolation most of us have experienced in the last year? Here are some things I've discovered, and everything I'm quoting on here in the following articles can be found in the links provided in the episode program notes. So where did social distancing come from? The Guardian, on May 28, 2020, an article written by Stephen Poole, titled, Social Distancing, How a 1950s Phrase Came to Dominate 2020, cites this, If social distancing sounds to you more like snubbing or ghosting a friend, you are right. It was a 1957 collection of work by sociologist Carl Menham that first described it as a way to enforce power hierarchies. The inhibition of free expression can also serve as a means of social distancing, he wrote. Thus, the higher ranks can constrain themselves to preserve a certain kind of deportment or dignity. In doing so, they distance themselves socially from the plebes. From Social to Physical This is an article that was in uh, futurism.com. It's a section titled The Bite. And it was published on March 20th, 2020 by Victor Tangerman. The article is titled, The Who, which is the World Health Organization, wants you to ditch the phrase social distancing. And the article goes on to say that the World Health Organization is officially advocating against the phrase social distancing, is from here on recommending the phrase physical distancing Instead, this is according to Reuters. The idea is to clarify that an order to stay at home during the current coronavirus outbreak isn't about breaking contact with your friends and family, but rather keeping a physical distance to make sure the disease doesn't spread. And take a note that this was first published in March of 2020. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've always heard social distancing being used in the mass media. The Psychological Effects of Social Distancing. This is an article by PMC, the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health, published August 16, 2020, by Kevin Sicali. The title of the article is The Dangers of Social Distancing, How COVID-19 Can Reshape Our Social Experience. Goes on to write, To society, social distancing represents the dangers of increasing social rejection, growing impersonality and individualism, and the loss of a sense of community. It negatively affects learning and growth, and it prevents people from effectively socializing, which is a fundamental human need. Austin Riggs Center, on August 10, 2020, published by Katie Lewis, Ph.D., wrote an article titled, Staying Away, the Psychological Impact of Social Distancing. Now, right now, the physical health and well-being of the country depend on our adherence to the recent and ongoing implementation of social distancing in communities across the globe to reduce the spread of the novel coronavirus. However, the current scale of social distancing is unprecedented and may lead to significant 
and lasting negative psychological effects. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, in a recent review of studies about quarantine during the infectious disease outbreaks, social distancing can lead to a higher prevalence of anxiety, depression, anger, loneliness, feelings of frustration, and boredom. Sound familiar? I've experienced at least four of those conditions now and in this last year. Last March 2020, when all this started, social distancing, I realized this, that connection and relationship are the vaccines against isolation. So here's what I'm doing. When I have someone that comes to mind and I'm curious about how they are doing, I pick up the phone and call them. I don't text or email them. I call them. Maybe we'll jump on a screen call. Maybe not. Until we get this virus under control, replace social with physical when you're talking about it and pick up the phone. If you know anyone with credibility that you think you'd like to hear from about this subject, let me know and I'll see about bringing them on the show so we can talk more about it. So go to whathasmyattention.com and leave me a message. And if you want to chime in with an audio comment, you can just click on the little blue button at the bottom right of any page and leave me a comment or question. And it may be aired on the show. Are you looking to start a podcast yourself to get your brand and message out there in a fun and bigger way? Visit imaginepodcasting.com to find out more. <laughs>